Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, you guys might be wondering right now, what is that big box behind me doing? Like, is it a new flat screen TV, LED 49 inch, super HD, 8K TV? No. While you can use a TV to enjoy nature, this will let you experience nature. Let's go find out. Okay, so that's the unboxing and uh, it's the clear lens, right? So what this is, is a piece of bulletproof panoramic plastic, carbonite something, poly something, really tough bulletproof stuff. It's the same material they use on fighter jet cockpits, so it's uh, very durable. It's completely transparent, slightly tinted, just so you get some UV protection from the sun. And, uh, but it makes the Jeep, instead of having to remove the freedom panels, freedom tops to get the open air experience, you can now with this have an open air experience without being exposed directly to the elements like rain or intense sun, which we get here in Singapore. Very, very hardcore sun. So it's an awesome upgrade. Um, I saw the unboxing. I was a little bit slower than usual because as you may already know, this is not my car. This is my wife's car. So she insists that I don't scratch it in any way whatsoever so I do things with a little more tender loving care and um, so yeah so what's gonna happen next is we're gonna remove the freedom panels from the Jeep and try to get this installed now it seems pretty easy just a handful of steps according to the instruction guide like I always say guys always read the instruction guide because you don't want to miss a step and then have to go back the slight issue that I think we may have is it won't be as easy as just putting on these two foam blocks before we put on the uh, panoramic top because on our Jeep there is already a foam padding to protect driver and passengers from getting in and out knocking their head so I'm not sure how that's gonna work out we're gonna remove the freedom panels and then find out so keep watching okay so maybe you guys saw me stumble a little bit when I was looking at these black foam bars or blocks that you're supposed to put on top um, on top after the freedom panels removed. So according to the instructions, it is labeled left and right, so you know which side goes on which side. It isn't. But nevertheless, it's easy because, you know, if it doesn't fit on one side, then it'll fit on the other side. So we got that done. Um, it seems like we don't have to remove the original foam cushion that comes with the car. So we're going to put on the lid right now and see how it goes. Let's do it. Okay, so I don't think I'm an idiot, but I told my wife about what I just said, about not having the left side and right side clearly labeled on these foam spacers. Um, and then I said, you know, she came to me and she's like, did you double check? Because you'll look very stupid if you say that there's no left and right side on the foam bars when they are. So I said, I don't see left and right. Showed it to her. You see it, DS as well as... The PS, it's a bit dark. JK, obviously the model of this Jeep. PS, passenger side. DS, driver side. I'm an idiot. Okay, so insulation is still ongoing. Um, as you can see, I've been struggling being stuck inside the Jeep for a little bit. And part of the reason why is because one of the latches and one of the bolts just doesn't seem to go in properly. Um, let me show you. It's uh, mildly annoying. All right, so you see this, there's six of these bolts, right? Two of them go into the middle slots where the freedom panel original locks go. Two go on that side and then two go on this side. And so all of the five bolts are going, went in beautifully. You know, it's tight, secure. You can see it's flush with the original roll bar. This one is a little wonky. So I didn't want to go all the way in because I was worried of screwing up the thread. And um, 
which obviously will not be a good thing. So, but if you remove this, let me just climb into the driver's seat. And if you look from here, let's get some light in here. If you look from here, you're gonna be able to see very quickly right here where the problem is, right? And that it's just, the bolt just doesn't sit straight with the lock nut. Whereas when you look here, it is straight. So this one's giving us a little bit of problem, a little bit of uh, frustration, but so I don't know if I should just go for it or what I should do. Same thing with the latches. Now these three latches are supposed to go up last after all six bolts are up. And um, so this one went in okay. This one went in, the middle one went in good. This one is not able to go in at all. So uh, I gotta maybe remove the whole thing and try to realign everything again. It's just weird how five of the bolts went in perfectly fine except for this one so well let's get going okay so we had to remove everything and um and now we're gonna do it on the ground to see if everything goes in straight and proper the way it's supposed to be so let's try this all right so we got all six bolts bolted in and this is the problematic one we're upside down now so this is the driver's side for us and um went in straight as an arrow so it doesn't seem to be a problem with the bolts and the nut i don't think it's a problem with the clear lid cover itself as well might be i have no clue we're gonna try to fit this up one more time and hope we get lucky again or rather, that's what we just get lucky. All right, guys, so we spent another hour figuring all that bit out. Um, I think we finally got it sorted out. It's not as ideal as I think it should be compared to a lot of the videos I've seen, well, the handful of videos I've seen on YouTube. Um, nevertheless, don't follow the instructions manual for once. I'm gonna say this, you guys who've been watching my videos would know I always reiterate the importance of reading your instruction manual, instruction guide, assembly guide, installation guide, whatever to go step by step, right? So according to the instruction manual, you're supposed to install the two bolts up here first, and then install the four bolts on each side. So as you may have seen in our uh, in the video in the earlier time-lapse and also me talking, it, that bolt was very problematic, the one up front. So what we did was removed everything and then as I removed the whole top, put it down flat on the floor, try all six bolts, went in straight as an arrow, no problems there. And, uh, and then we redid this whole installation process. But instead of going those two bolts first, what we did was mildly put in that one and then this one and then this one and then this one. So kind of like a same way you bolt down your rims on your wheels, you know, you do a star pattern. So we kind of did that and then that worked. Um, which leads to the final bit. So we can see the three latches up front, right? These three latches that secure the front end of the clear lids to the Jeep. Um, these two went in pretty okay. This one, let me just flip this open for you. This one is, you see that? It's not exactly, doesn't seem to be very strong, but uh, having said that, when you get to the outside, it's okay. Sorry about the fingerprints, but uh, yeah, so it seems like we may have completed the installation of this clear lids onto my wife's JK. I have to say this though, it was not the easiest installation. 
in terms of easiness, <laughs> but you know, it seems to be working fine for now. So we're gonna do the ultimate test. Right now, we're gonna drive out to a car wash and see if it leaks. We're also gonna go onto the freeway to see what the sounds are like. And um, it should be okay. From what I did, a visual inspection, it seems like it's gonna be okay. So, wow, thank you for spending all this time with me. Um, we will, I will add in a little bit more, but this thing, it's not cheap. And it's one of the most important mods that my wife requested for. And um, so I'm really hoping it holds up. All right, let's go for a drive.